Hey everyone. The response to my last video on flat modeling anime hair has been really great, but I've been getting a lot of questions about the details of the modifier setup. There's a lot that can go wrong with all the moving parts of the curve objects and the simple deform and getting everything lined up correctly. And even if you do get it mostly working, it can be hard to figure out exactly what parameter affects what to get to the final shape. And especially if you're going for a, sh a shape slightly different than what I showed. So it's time for a video to go into all the technical details. I've got a test scene file here, and I'll be walking you through a few examples to really understand how these modifiers work and what does what and what will give you problems and all of that. So I've got several examples we'll walk through, and this file will also be available for download in the description. For our first example, we've got a couple of objects. First, we have a default cube, but I've added a texture to it so that we can keep track of what face is pointing in what direction. And we have a Bezier curve. This is a default curve, just like a brand newly created one, but I've added a little bit of extrude so we can keep track of the tilt angle more easily. I had a bunch of questions about the tilt, so for those not familiar, tilt is something you can add to a curve that rotates the geometry or whatever else you put around it, uh, on it, around it. And you can do that here with mean tilt or with the control T hotkey. So what exactly does the curve modifier do? Well, it puts things on curves, and then if you move those things, they will be mapped down the curve, much like a follow path constraint does, except it also deforms the object. And well, the constraint puts an object on a curve, but really what this is doing is it, push it puts the mesh inside the object on the curve. As if you think of it as the object is a container and the mesh is inside, and what I mean by that is, if I move just the object, we can see its origin point there, and that tells us where the center of the object is. But on the curve, we notice the object's origin point is still at the center. The origin point didn't move, even though the geometry went all the way over there. And now if I move the object with the origin point moving on X, it's going up and down the curve, matching the shape. And that is because, as we can see, we're on the x-axis, and so x plus is pointing down the curve. Whereas if we change to y, now y plus is pointing down the curve, or whatever else we select. So the simple way of knowing which direction is my object going to be oriented is this axis is what axis of your object is going to go down the length of the curve. But what defines down, you may ask? Well, if we look inside our curve, we can see the normals all go in the same direction. You can actually change the different the you can change the direction under the W menu, switch direction, and now if we do this, it's starting here. So whatever we do, our geometry gets put on the starting point of the curve, and then moving it in the positive dir direction of the axis, so I su suppose in uh, for a negative axis, a negative direction, will make it go down the length of the curve. So since it's switched direction, if I move x positive, that's going the opposite direction from before, but that's because that's still the x positive axis there. But what happens if we move it on another axis? I restore the original direction of our curve, so x goes down the curve, but what does y do? Well, it offsets off the curve, matching the direction of the curve's tilt. And z offsets off the curve, but does no distortion because it's not curved in that direction. And of course, if we change this and then do Y, now Y is up and down the curve, and you'll get all sorts of different results. You will also get offset if we move the curve itself. I've added some bones to show us where the origin point of the box and the curve is. So as I move this curve on Y, it stretches between the origin points. If our box is on our curve, the geometry has moved, but the origin points are in the same place. Let's move that out again. And you can see that this is changing things. And that is because the distance between the origin points is effectively the distance that this is displaced off the curve. So moving the curve this way 
would be the same as if we left it at zero and moved the box that way. So identical and of course up and down. That makes it easy to keep track of where it's going. That's all pretty straightforward so far. So now let's make it weird. Otherwise, what do we even need a tutorial for? Let's rotate it on Z. The curve rotates, the cube does not. And that means we end up with a different axis pointing down the curve depending on where we're at in the rotation. But if we rotate on X, it stays lined up all right. And if we rotate on Y, which is what we need to get to the setup for our hair lattice, Now we've got Z minus pointing down the curve instead of our usual X plus. So somehow we got an extra 90 degrees of rotation around here in addition to bringing us into this new shape. So why is that? Well, let's reset this and do the exact same rotation, but this time in edit mode, RY 90 and X plus is pointing down the curve as we would want. So what's going on? And what's going on is that this modifier is evaluated in world space. And if we set it back and then redo this rotation, we see we have 90 Y rotation on the object. So edit uh, rotating things or any transforms on the object is different from on the mesh or curves inside. If I apply this rotation, we've got Z minus, and X plus it's working again because now that rotation is gone I don't understand exactly what's going on under the hood with this but think of it this way if you've got rotations on your object they're going to be added to some modifiers like this that use world space and that's because what what it thinks is going on now is it thinks that it's actually another 90 degrees in one of these directions. I don't I don't know which one, but that's what happens when you have that extra rotation on the object. So now we understand axis goes down curve and do all your rotations in edit mode, otherwise you'll have extra rotations. But there's one more thing we want to note before we move to the next example, and that is the tilt of the curve. Let's make this a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And remember, the mesh created here is actually perpendicular to the normals of the curve, but it doesn't really matter. So at the moment, this is parallel to the y-axis. Now let's rotate it back 90 degrees to the original position. And now it's perpendicular to the y-axis. So this whole thing has rolled from the rotation. We see here the x is closer to y and the or X is closer to minus Y and plus is more plus Y. And after we give it the rotation, X is actually facing plus X originally. We've rotated around and the plus sign is in the minus X. So this whole thing has rolled around. And if we want to have the original alignment, we have to give it 90 degrees of tilt. Now let's move on to the executive example where I will show you basically the same things but with a different setup so that it will make even more sense. Here is our second little example. We've got the same curve but now I have moved it around but in edit mode to more match up with the orientation we're going to want for our hair setup. And this time we have a plane which is a better block in than the cube and again we have axes. So. What happens when I enable the curve modifier? We've got minus Z, and that's because down the curve corresponds to the minus Z direction of the plane. And we turn it on, and what? Uh, hmm. Well, no tilt. We gotta get that 90 degree tilt I talked about. There we go. And something to note on tilt is in this mean tilt here, it's showing you the average of all the selected points. So if I give this some different rotation, but then I select the other point, it's not telling you the full rotation of either. It's giving you the average between the two. So you need to watch out for that. Whenever working with tilt, it's good to use Alt-T to reset it, and then type the value you want, or use Control-T and hit 90 and hit Enter. So this seems to be working pretty nicely. Z plus and Z minus are oriented correctly. 
but it's not really in the right place. But before we look at that, let's look at another little side example we have here. Here is a plane with the, the curve at the same orientation, but the plane is flat. It's aligned with y instead of z. And on the modifier, I've got it set to minus y. So it should give us the same as this, right? Let's turn it on, and it does. Or at least at an initial glance it does. y plus is on the top and y minus is on the bottom. But x is flipped. This whole thing has been rotated around 180 degrees. So what's with that? Well, it's the tilt again. So this again has zero tilt. Let's give it that 90 degree, t oh no, we're here. Okay, keep going until it looks right. Another 90 degrees, and now it looks right at 180 degrees of tilt. So why is that happening? I don't really know. It's because it's something to do with an extra 90 degrees of tilt to get it facing in the right direction. An extra 90 degrees of rotation, and somehow that ends up being tilt. Uh, I won't claim to understand the math, but if you do want to model something flat, you can use, well, flat uh, on these axes instead of these, you can use y plus and minus, but then you need 180 degrees of tilt. That's the lesson to learn. Let's not get into all the gory details of why it works that way. All right, we are most of the way to the setup we need so far. We have a plane that's facing forward, and when we put it on the curve, it's still facing forward, but it's getting the shape. But it's in the wrong place on the curve. The center of the plane seems to be on the top point, and we need the top of the plane to be on the top point. So what's with that? Well, next collection. Here's a setup where we've got two planes, and I've marked their origin points with some constrained objects, and we can see the origin point of our curve. So. When I turn this one on, it'll be the same as before, that's what you're expecting. And I assume, since this has a different origin point, and people always say align the origin points, that when we turn this one on, it'll be different from this, but it's actually the same. So, what's with that? Well, what's with that is, again, the curve is being evaluated in world space, and origin point essentially affects local space uh, within an object. And if you're not familiar with the idea of local and world, world space is the grid as we're used to it, x and y and z. Whereas local space is x and y and z measured from your origin point, and then with any transforms applied. So if x plus is normally that way, and then we give it 90 degrees, then in local space, x plus is now that way, which would be global y. So it matters where the curve's origin point is. Let's move its origin point to the top of the curve object, and suddenly these work right, lined up perfectly with the curve. So that's what we need to worry about. The curve's origin matters, the geometry's origin does not. But our plane still isn't quite in the right place because it's offset from the curve. If I move it to zero, of course, or reset it there with Alt-G, now it's right. And if I move the curve, then you know, the plane lines up with it nicely. But in my hair modeling tutorial, I want my plane to be off over here because the curve is going to be on the model's head, and I want a nice clear space to work on this. I want to be able to see it here and see it over the character's head. So if it's going to be over here, then how do we make that work? And the answer is that we offset the curve's origin point. And in this case, let's move it to the top of the plane. And perfect. So now, essentially what's happening is the distance from the curve's origin to the actual curve object is the amount it's going to move the mesh when we place it on the curve. So you can put your mesh anywhere you want in your scene as long as you then move the curve's origin point to where you want it to be. And think of it this way. Everything below, every part of the mesh below the curve's origin point is going to be below the starting control point on the axis that you've set it on. Now we've covered curves pretty well. It's time to talk about 
Simple Deform. The Simple Deform modifier can be used to twist, bend, taper, or stretch. We care about bend. And let's turn it on. And it bends. And specifically, it bends the amount you set. That's pretty easy. So 180 degree bends you to a half circle. And you may notice it bends around the origin point. We're set to the z-axis. Set to others, of course. So it's bending around the z-axis. If we set the angle to negative, it'll go the other way. So 180 degrees is a decent angle. But what if we want it to bend around a different point? Luckily, we can set an uh, object. So I've got this empty here. And now it bends around wherever that object's origin point is instead. Of course, moving on Z doesn't matter because it's not bending on Z. It's bending around Z. And rotating it, well, it's bending around that now, so it's going to get weird. So effectively what this means is that if we move this on minus Y, it it's getting smaller because it's bending around here, but since it has to get to 180 degrees, it has to shrink it or something. It's a bit weird. The symbol to form is weird compared to other transforms, not just because of that effect, but because no matter what size your object is, it's always going to get it to the full 180 degree bend. So if I scale this, it gets bigger, but it's still bent at 180 degrees or smaller, but still the full 180 degrees. So yeah, simple to form is not the most intuitive. But the part we care about is that we have this empty and that's going to determine that. Now it's time to combine our simple to form and curve. Turn that off and turn the curve on first. And for this one, I've set the curve object to be a bit more like our hair pose, where we can adjust these to get the amount of curve we want. And importantly, note that the simple to form comes after the curve. So before the mesh started here at zero and was being curved, but now the mesh is here, so it's moved down on Y effectively. So now when we turn this on, it's still bending around the same place. So that's actually made it quite large. And that's what we need that empty to adjust for. Move the empty, it effectively shrinks the mesh and effectively controls how small this area is at the top before those vertices converge. If we want a nice hair shape, that's a pretty good place to have it. So now we're pretty close to the, I guess, border sphere setup that we use for the bangs in the hair modeling. So we can control our shape in this direction by adjusting the curve. And this will you know, control how close it is to a sphere. We can control a lot about the size and the top convergence by adjusting this empty. But how do we adjust it on X? If we scale it on X, that actually just makes it bigger. I mean, it makes it bigger on X, but it also gets bigger on Y, so that's not really doing us any good. And that's because of what I said earlier about symbol to form always having to get you to the rotation mount you entered. So if we want a different size on X than on Y, that's where a tweak lattice comes in. I've already got this one set up. I've put a shape key on it, tab into edit mode, and scale it on X. And there we go, no problems. And that's because the change to size from the lattice is coming after the symbol to form in the modifier stack, so it doesn't affect it. And this is also nice if, say, you wanted to have more than 180. If you wanted to have a bit more of a wraparound around the character's head, we can turn this up, maybe 210. Then we have to adjust our empty, which is annoying, but we can do that. And now we've got some more wrap going. Let's move our lattice. And now if we change it, that's still working. But what if we also wanted just these bits to behave a bit differently, maybe to come back more. We could grab just one line on these and pull just that back or flatten those out again or curve them in even more. 
you can do any transform you want. And that's the nice thing about lattices. And you can add as many different shape keys or as many lattices as you want. Or you could even use hooks or something to shape this more. So moving on to our last collection here, this finally is the full setup with everything you need. So if you don't feel like recreating everything manually, you can just go to the link in the description, download this file, and then append this collection into your file and use it however you like. But let's take a look at a couple things that have changed. I'm going to hide the tweak lattice and note here that we've switched over to having a wrap lattice. It's the wrap lattice that is being affected by the simpled form and curve. The plane no longer is. The plane is just in the lattice, and that's because this plane is just a block-in for whatever hair strands or whatever else you're modeling that you want to stick inside the lattice. So there was some confusion about that in the original video, where I showed the setup on a plane and then I copied everything to a lattice, and people weren't clear if you still needed the plane. Well, you don't. It's just there so you can see what your lattice is doing. But there's a couple other things that have changed subtly. You may notice that the lattice is larger than the plane, and because of that, from the previous setup, I've had to adjust the angle and the position of the empty a little bit. I did it this way just because I wanted my plane to still match up, but I also wanted to leave myself some extra room on the margins. So I recommend doing that. Let's tighten that up a bit more. It doesn't really matter if the lattice passes it through itself like this. If you do expand the mesh inside it, I'm going to scale this on X, then it will go out the sides of the lattice, but that's when it has passed outside. So you're not going to distort your mesh until you go outside the bounds of the lattice, which is why I gave it some extra space. And then, of course, the tweak lattice operates on the wrap lattice instead of on the plane as well. Except I don't have it enabled. As I was saying, the tweak lattice operates on the wrap lattice. So, there you go. You can stick that into any shape you want. You can use the curve in any way you want. And one last important thing is I parented the entire setup to an empty, which is hiding there. And that's so that if you, say, wanted to do the back of your character's head instead, instead of figuring out how to do this whole stack to face the back, you can just rotate it on the empty. And that doesn't mess up anything because they're all parented. So I don't really understand why the uh, world coordinates stuff with the curve is fine with this. But it is, so hey, won't look a gift horse in a mouth. But anyway, there's your full setup. Feel free to grab it. And as before, feel free to ask lots of questions in the comments or message me on Twitter or Facebook or email me or whatever else. It's a small channel, so I have been able to respond to every message and every comment up to this point. So keep them coming. I'll have new videos soon as I finally get a new character finished up where I'll be showing more hair and also dealing with long hair in the back.